Okay, um, we're looking at um, one of Z-Axis's VMP systems, and the purpose of this video, there's going to be a few parts to it. Um, I want to go over the overview of the touchscreen interface. Um, there'll be uh, parts that talk about the analytical pan balance, and also um, there'll be parts of the discussion that talk about the fluidics and the overall system accuracy, which will include our nozzles, it will include the size um, and length of our tubing that's connected to the VMP uh, pump module. And so um, one of the first questions we get um, is about the immediate run controls. This is the touchscreen interface. Um, you'll see on the front page or the home screen, we um, use a series of, of numbers as well as icons to navigate the pump. Um, we've called um, this program VMP system. You can uh, name and or number um, zero through 99. So there's 100 programs that are stored. This um, same uh, touch screen will talk to 32, um, up to 32, expandable to 64 uh, pump modules over RS-485. Back to my home screen. My immediate run controls are basically, um, I have an abort or stop. I've got a metering mode or continuous mode, as some may call it, or a, a dispense or dosing mode. And then I have my start button, which is our start signal. I can also, um, a combination of the pump volume uh, will give us, and the revolutions of the pump, gives us a totalizer for volume. We can see if we're linking to programs, meaning we can link several programs together. Um, we can vary our RPM, which is the rotational speed or flow rate of the pump. We can change pump direction and we can quickly go out to our maximum stroke. You'll see the pump move if I hit that, for example. Um, when I'm done, I can go back um, to my original setting. So um, what I'd like to show off is, um, now that we've looked at the immediate run controls, I'd like to show off when someone first gets the pump, the first question is usually, what size tubing, uh, does it matter? Um, where should the pump be? Just some of the basic pump setup stuff. So um, as you can see here in the lab, I've got my water um, located. Um, slightly below the pump, which is up on a little higher shelf. The VMP will prime 15 feet uh, vertically, so I could place this water on the floor, it wouldn't matter. Um, same being true or similar being true to the output tubing, I could have 100 feet or 200 feet, and we'll talk about how that may influence the actual dispense volume, but um, to try to cover a few of those questions with an example, I'd like to show when we first get the pump, I'm going to show off one of the things the pump does. I can put it in reverse. I'm going to go out to maximum stroke. I happen to be full of water in my system, but I can simply change the direction, put it in a continuous metering mode, and this all this fluid is going to evacuate out back to my vessel. So as I've evacuated out, um, the tubing's dry. Uh, we're running it back to our, our vessel. Um, now I'm ready to, let's say the pump, say we started out like this, we need to prime our system. What we recommend is rather than starting out at a low volume, for example, this is a one, this pump's capable of approximately 1.28 uh, milliliters per rev. Um, the flashing equals indicates to the user that I'm not actually at my set point. Uh, in this case, just for experiment's sake, we're doing 0.1 ml or 100 microliters. Um, it's just telling me I'm not equal to what I would want to do, say, for my test. However, we're going to prime the system. So I'm going to prime in a continuous mode. I'm going to do 60 RPM, which happens to be a slow speed. I'm going to change my pump direction now that I'm going to pump towards my pan balance. I'm going to hit start. You hear the pump turn on, the fluid is uh, slowly 
coming up the tubing. It's gonna shortly be here. It's coming up now through the pump. And the idea of the slow speed is to, um, and at maximum, allows us to kind of uniformly move fluid through, not introduce uh, air bubbles into the system. Once my system is primed, I can pause um, or hit the abort. I then can go back to my dispense mode. Let's say I need to do one dispense of this point one. I hit my equals. And here's where it's gonna be very important. One of the questions we get is, um, you know, how do I measure what the pump does? Or how do I, um, the pump's positive displacement, the pump's volumetric, things we know are very good for very accurate um, and high precision fluid dispensing. However, um, we oftentimes, we don't know the influence or the impact uh, of a nozzle. Uh, nozzle being where the pump is eject or the fluid is ejected. And so we're gonna use a gravimetric pan balance, which is very sensitive uh, even to air. I'm gonna tear it. Just introduce, um, so we've got a real scale here. It's very sensitive. We're going out to the fifth digit or the um, uh, nano liter, um, which is a very hard thing to measure with evaporation and some other things, um, some other fluid dynamic concerns at those. So we're using a very sensitive uh, scale five position. Um, and what I wanna show is the impact of speed in our nozzle. So for example, at 60 RPM, um, with this nozzle, I got about a one inch nozzle, uh, maybe an 18 gauge um, in size. And so I'm gonna do a few dispenses. Even if we just observe how that's dribbling out, we can probably tell that's probably not the right size nozzle to get a repeatable result. And I can show that by, I'm gonna tear the scale. My target's 100 or 0 0.1, 0 0.1 mLs or 100 microliters. This shows some of the inconsistency here. Uh, for example, I get 11.11. Um, let me tear that, do another shot. We get some hanging drips. We get things that, uh, now we get a, sh a lower shot. So I got a high shot, a low shot. Just basically things that we can chase our tail with. Um, so um, everything matters um, when we do precision dispensing. So. What I'm gonna simply do in this case is, I'm gonna change my speed to a speed that Z-axis rec recommends often for water-like water -like chemistry. Um, and we'll enter this speed of 320. Um, I just know that's a speed that works well with my setup, um, but that speed could vary, our volume could vary. Don't wanna to focus too much on that besides the flow rate and the influence uh, relative to system accuracy. So. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna normalize that change. And let's tear our scale. Let's observe the needle. Um, we don't have a hanging drip. We're getting a clean um, a eject off of it. And so um, without doing any, any touching, I'm 0.101. So I'm within a 10th of a percent. Um, our system accuracy is 1%. Um, full scale, and our reproducibility is better than half a percent. So shot to shot, um, the first shot we typically throw away, um, which I should have pointed out, we get to a steady state where we can show off the reproducibility of the shot. We're getting our 101s. We're getting our 101s fairly consistent. So, consistently. Now let's say I absolutely want to get uh, 100. Well, the VMP has a mode to do a manual calibration. Um, this comes into play um, certainly with um, certainly with when we're not working with water. Water has a one-to-one -one density um, relationship to volume. So say I'm pumping something with uh, solids uh, or things in it. Uh, we do have a method to, and this is a little bit, um, a little bit crowded, but I've got a tool. We talk about this in our manual. I can make a small counterclockwise adjustment to make the volume less, come back to my equals. Same thing, I'm gonna let this normalize, essentially a steady state um, for the change I made. 
and let's see how close. So I undershot. Um, let me double check that. Now I'll make a small adjustment the other way. Tear our scale. Getting closer. Um, a few back and forths with this. This is normally done at the factory um, with a standardized uh, setup, tubing included and tip. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna call it probably close enough. Let's see where we, um, if we get right at the target. So here we are right at the target. Um, again, that was a mechanical adjustment, showing that only because most of you are not pumping water. Um, you're gonna be pumping something that has a different specific gravity. Um, so again, we'll kind of recap. We've got system accuracy related to tips. Um, one of the common things, someone will say, well, I don't, uh, you know, what does that mean if I change the tip? Well, if I change this tip, I've now taken off uh, this about one inch long, maybe 18 gauge nozzle I now have closer to probably an eighth inch, um, just a slip over lure taper. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna change anything. I haven't changed the speed. I haven't changed anything. First of all, we can kind of tell how that plunges or drips out of there is not great. Um, but let's take a shot. And you can see we're a little higher over the 100. I'm gonna do another one just to make sure um, you know, we're getting, we're drifting a little bit. Now, keep in mind, we're out into the fourth or fifth digit um, of grams. So don't know, it doesn't necessarily have an influence uh, on every application, but it's one of the questions we get about system accuracy. Same thing can be said for, I'm gonna go and install that same nozzle back on. Run a few shots. And then let's say we change our speed back down to that 60 RPM, which we showed earlier in the video. But same thing, we get inconsistent drips, our volume is low. Um, and one of the common things, does the nozzle matter? Well, the nozzle absolutely matters. The speed matters, um, the flow rate matters, um, particularly when we're trying to hold 1% and half a percent accuracy and precision. So. Um, just a tech note from Z-Axis, um, please consider this, give us a call, um, call our factory, check out our website, and um, we, can talk about, we can talk about your specific application. And then I'd like to just end with um, something I showed at the beginning. We just did this experiment, but I want to get my, get my chemical out of the pump. Perhaps it's dangerous or air, uh, maybe it crystallizes or it's sugar, it's sugar or salt, something I don't want to leave in the pump head, I simply reverse the pump. I mentioned taking it out to max stroke. And let's say uh, we want to purge this out. We may even want to introduce a cleaning chemical. Um, hold this nozzle up into um, maybe some other chemical that we want to leave in the pump, isopropyl alcohol um, or maybe a solvent. I've adjusted my pump. I've changed direction, changes to a metering mode. And again, I'm just going to, you'll see, it might be hard to see in the video, but the fluid now is reversing out of the pump back to the reservoir. Um, so I just encourage uh, anyone to check, uh, please check out Z-Axis, contact us. Uh, we'd be happy to go over your specific application and just talk about some of these general things and general setup of our VMP metering system. Uh, thank you.